Inspector General Seminar and the Fundraising Seminar. My name is Ed Hartman. I'm DAV's Inspector General, joined by Brian Cohort, our Chief Development Officer in charge of all of our fundraising activities at the national level. Certainly good to look at and see such a large crowd here. Uh, this is probably one of the larger crowds we've had in quite a while. If you're here for the first time, why don't you raise your hand for me? All right, that's great, great. You can't hear me? You really can't hear me. Seriously. I was born at night, but not last night. That's gonna be really loud. You sure? Okay. They, they like it loud? Okay. Is that better? All right. I think we got it now. Is that better? All right. Well, certainly, uh, again, welcome. Uh, I'm glad to see such a large group of folks here in attendance here with, uh, with us this afternoon. Uh, today, uh, during my presentation, as it relates to the Inspector General, uh, Inspector, Inspector General Seminar, we're going to uh, touch on several things. Most importantly related to DAB finances at all levels, uh, our responsibility, how we raise funds, how we should be expending funds, and also we're going to talk a little bit about uh, our responsibilities as individual members and leaders at the chapter level and department level in terms of identifying and vetting, if you will, potential future leaders of DAB. One of the things I always like to remind people at all levels of DAB is that Funds that um, are donated to DAB entities at all levels are provided by the general public to support DAB's free programs of service uh, to ill and injured veterans and their families, for which we are known. Of course, everybody knows that we've been around for nearly 100 years and we have a hallmark of service programs for which DAB is very specifically known for, that being our service program our voluntary services program, transportation network, our legislative efforts, our employment programs. Um, those are our hallmark programs that DAB is widely known for across the country by the general public. And as an organization at all levels, it's our fiduciary responsibility to ensure that the funds provided to DAB are utilized for that purpose. I always like to um, uh, express to people and try to explain to people that when people give money to DAB, it's not our money as an organization. It's the general public's money that they have provided to DAB um, to use uh, in a fashion that they see fit to help uh, promote service programs to veterans in their communities. Um, so when we lose that public trust, then obviously the funding and the financial support that's provided to all of our chapters and departments across the country goes away. So it's very, very important that we use the funds that are contributed to us as an organization at all levels on our federally chartered purpose of providing service to ill and injured veterans and their families. That being said, how do we get our uh, funding at all levels of DAB? Uh, again, of course, as chapters uh, primarily, uh, a majority of our chapters are involved in forget-me-not drives uh, in your communities. And just as a reminder, several years, I shouldn't say several years ago, about three years ago, uh, we amended our Constitution and bylaws that allows for chapters in their local communities to conduct uh, forget-me-not drives throughout the entire year so long as it doesn't exceed seven uh, days during the course of the year. Previously it read that uh, a chapter can do one forget-me-not drive during the course of the year for a period uh, in concession that does not exceed seven days. So that really limited uh, the opportunities for chapters. They had to identify one particular time during the year in which their chapter was going to benefit the most from uh, conducting their forget-me-not drive. Uh, a lot of folks uh, decided to do it on Memorial Day, the week of Memorial Day, uh, the week of July 4th, the week of Veterans Day. Now we have the opportunity to kind of break that up so we can uh, have a forget-me-not drive uh, for a couple days over Memorial Day, a couple days over 4th of July, a couple days over um, uh, Veterans Day. <coughs> 
And of course, if there are unique uh, opportunities in your communities throughout the course of the year that allow you to become involved, where it's a county fair or something, uh, you're certainly uh, able to take advantage of that as well to maximize DEB's exposure in your community and also, in turn, uh, be able to uh, collect more money uh, during the course of the year. The Golden Crown Military Appreciation Mondays, of course, is a relationship that the national organization has created and fostered over the years with Golden Corral. This provides the opportunity for chapters and departments to uh, participate in Golden Corral's Military Appreciation Monday events. Um, now, keep in mind, and we have to remind people of this each and every year, that uh, this relationship and this program has primarily been um, developed as a department fundraising program. Now, obviously, departments do not have the manpower, uh, the individuals, the number of people that it would take to go around to each and every Golden Corral restaurant to support and collect funds on those Military Appreciation Monday weekends. Uh, so therefore, they rely upon the departments in the local communities to uh, assist in, in those endeavors and, of course, also benefit from uh, their participation in those Golden Corral Military Appreciation Mondays. Uh, it's also the discretion of the department to allow chapters to, if they so wish, to uh, collect and receive and retain all of the funds that the chapter brings in for those Golden Crawl Military Appreciation Monday events. Some departments allow the chapters to keep half. Uh, some departments require that it all come back to the department. Uh, but again, it's important for us to know that we're all on the same team here, and regardless of whatever the rules and, and uh, bylaws state in the department's constitution and bylaws as it relates to fundraisers and in particularly Golden Corral Military Appreciation Monday events, we're all on the same team, and we have to realize that what we're doing as a chapter, as individuals, is benefiting DAB at all levels, whether that's at the chapter level, at the department level. None of the proceeds from Golden Crown Military Appreciation Monday funnel their way up to the national organization. And I mention that because a lot of people, uh, throughout the course of the year, I get a lot of telephone calls or I attend meetings and I uh, generally hear um, the uh, comment that funds, at, for whatever reason, at some point have to flow up and a portion of fundraisers go to the national organization. That's absolutely not the case at all. As a matter of fact, DAV is very <clears throat> unique as it's related to other uh, veteran service organizations. Funds do not go up in DAV, but rather funds go down in DAV. So fundraising opportunities and fundraising activities, I'm sure many of which that Brian will discuss here shortly, uh, we'll get into how those funds trickle down to departments to help uh, operate service programs in your communities. Um, of course, we also have our membership dues uh, per capita distributions. Those are for service programs for chapters and departments. And those are uh, uh, funds that are based upon the size of your organization. Um, and for every member that your chapter has, you get a uh, uh, dollar amount uh, a couple times a year to, based upon the size of your membership to help you operate your service programs locally. Um, one of the things that uh, if you were at the business session this morning or if you were at the National Executive Committee and the Board of Directors meeting uh, on Friday, um, you will have noticed that the general life fund for the membership uh, fund is declining, is depleting. That fund is losing money and of course that fund needs to be replenished because uh, that money comes directly back to departments and chapters to operate its service programs in the community. So that was the reason if you were in the session this morning, there was a resolution that was proposed that was going to increase the amount of life membership to a flat amount of $300 uh, for every member regardless of age with the exception of those that are 80 and over, uh, of which those will still be offered for free. That will stabilize the life membership fund and allow that life membership fund to continue to make those disbursements to chapters and departments to uh, fulfill its obligation of providing service uh, programs in the community. <clears throat> 
approved fundraisers at the chapter and department level. Of course, uh, we have many chapters. We have many departments to get very creative in their fundraising activities in the community. A lot of chapters, a lot of departments host uh, um, golf tournaments. Uh, a lot of chapters, a lot of departments have raffles. They raffle off certain events. I can tell you that there are um, a lot of uh, chapters that purchase uh, four-wheel drive, all-terrain vehicles, uh, some have even purchased cars at a discounted rate and sold raffle tickets that have been proven to be great fundraising um, programs for chapters and departments. But the key takeaway here is that obviously any fundraising activity, with the exception of uh, Golden Crown Military Appreciation Monday and our Forget Me Not Drives, must be uh, pre-approved by the department executive committee if it's a chapter uh, intended fundraiser and in turn any department uh, fundraiser at the state level would need to meet the prior approval of the national executive committee prior to the implementation of that program one of the things that um, as a as a bullet underneath that um, um, item talks about the use of DAB's name and logo associated with fundraisers. Um, just because an entity, whether it be a chapter or department, gets the approval of the appropriate governing body to host a fundraiser does not extend uh, the approval of that chapter or the department to authorize a third party the use of DAB's name or logo, both of which are trademarked. If, they're, if you're working with a, uh, another entity, such as a golf course, if you're doing a uh, golf tournament, uh, and there's going to be the opportunity for the DAB uh, seal or logo to be associated with uh, banners in the communities or flyers in the communities promoting the golf tournament, any usage of the DAB seal or logo um, for the purposes of fundraising must meet with the prior approval of the National Executive Committee. So uh, even though it may be a chapter uh, uh, sanctioned fundraiser, which would require the approval of the department, if the logo or the uh, seal is going to be used in conjunction with that or plan to be approved or plan to be used in conjunction with that, uh, the National Executive Committee would also need to approve uh, that proposed fundraiser and the use of the seal or logo. Online solicitations, this has been a hot button topic over the last uh, many years, of course, with the uh, everything being online, everything being, everybody being on Facebook and Twitter and GoFundMe. Um, uh, we have to realize that as DAV chapters and state departments, we're only permitted to operate in our chartered territory. And our chartered territory is very specific if we're a chapter to the city that we operate in where we're chartered. If we are a department, we are only permitted to operate and raise funds in the state that uh, we are in. By virtue of allowing fundraising to be conducted online, you are by far exceeding your chartered territory because now you are uh, soliciting and receiving donations from all over the country. The only entity that is uh, permitted to conduct any online fundraising activity obviously is the national organization because as a national organization we're responsible. We have uh, the chartered territory of the entire United States um, and if you saw the board of directors report uh, and then also Barry Jezinoski's report this morning uh, at the session, 87 cents of every dollar that we bring in at the national level is directly spent on free programs of service to ill and injured veterans. So um, we have to make sure that, uh, and we've identified a few uh, chapters across country, a few departments that have had online donation buttons on, associated with their home page or their web page or on their Facebook page or on GoFundMe. Uh, when we identify those, we obviously uh, immediately contact the chapter of the department and require that they remove those because that's a violation of the bylaws. The bylaws only allow a chapter or an apartment to conduct operations and raise funds in their chartered territory only. 
course, we also uh, have the opportunity to be the recipient of grants. There's absolutely positively nothing wrong with a chapter or a department uh, to solicit grants from businesses in your communities. Uh, the only thing that may not be done uh, is for a chapter or to a department to solicit a grant from a large national corporation. And again, because now you are uh, soliciting funds uh, far outside of your chartered territory. A prime example that I use most typically is Walmart. Uh, of course, Walmart's a big national brand, right? But they do have local stores, uh, and those local stores are provided with funds from their corporate headquarters to support uh, nonprofit organizations and good causes in their community. So if you have a Walmart in your community, there's nothing wrong with your chapter going to that store and applying for a grant from that, sole spe or that uh, store specifically. Uh, but you can in no way solicit and request a grant from uh, Walmart's headquarters, which is in Bentonville, Arkansas. Everything that we do, we have to operate in our own little sandbox there. And of course, from time to time, we're all um, surprised and blessed to be able to fortunately uh, get a, a bequest from a member uh, in our chapter or uh, a community resident that recognizes the good uh, doings of DAB and they have left a, a gift to DAB chapter. So those are typically all of the methods of fundraising for chapters and departments that we typically see. <clears throat> when we get our funds, obviously, we have to do everything in our power to protect the assets from theft or conversion. Now, obviously, we're all veterans. We're all disabled veterans. I would like to think that we all have a very high level of integrity, and we always want to do what's right. Uh, unfortunately, we have had some instances uh, throughout the last many years, uh, some of them, uh, do make the news and we encourage where theft is identified for uh, those entities to pursue criminal charges with the local authorities because we certainly want to make sure that the community understands and sees that if we find somebody with an organization doing something improper with funds that we're going to hold them accountable. Um, and it's far better for us to identify it bring it to the attention of the authorities and bring charges against those individuals rather than an outside individual identifying it. And then it gives the appearance of one, DAB doesn't even know where its money is going, or two, DAB was fully aware of this, condoned it, and now they're trying to cover it up. So anytime that we do identify it, uh, we certainly strongly encourage and in many cases require that they report that theft to the authorities, file a report and uh, ask that uh, criminal charges be uh, pursued against that individual. Any and all uh, cash that we receive as an organization, we must maintain in uh, FDIC accounts at a bank, federal credit union. Um, you know, we can't have large amounts of cash being stored in a safe, you know, at somebody's home or um, you know, at a chapter building, if you have, if you do have a chapter building. So all of our assets have to go into an FDIC-insured uh, bank account of some sort. Any property that the chapter owns or is gifted, whether that be land, buildings, equipment, must be titled solely uh, in the name of that DAV entity. Uh, there can be no shared deeds. Uh, we had historically in the past identified, and we've had since resolved the issues where back in the 1950s or 60s, uh, the, a DAV chapter uh, in conjunction with a VFW post or American Legion post decided that they were going to uh, bring their funds together, buy a building, and then each would be listed as a, an owner of the building, a co-owner of the building. Uh, those always lead to problems, um, and that was never permitted within DAB's bylaws, um, simply because we have to ensure that uh, any and all property that we have 
is titled solely in DAB's name to prevent any uh, mismanagement of property, uh, any theft of property. Um, and so with that being said, we always need to make sure that anything that we get, we can't uh, title property or automobiles in the name of an individual, such as a commander. Uh, anything and everything's got to be titled solely in the name of the DAB entity. One thing that we really strongly encourage is the purchase of a DNO policy uh, for chapters and departments. Uh, a DNO policy is basically a policy that will protect the chapter from theft or conversion of funds, embezzlement of funds uh, by an officer. Uh, if they so decided that they wanted to drain the bank account of the chapter, a DNO policy would be helpful in terms of recovering funds that were otherwise uh, stolen from the chapter uh, by way of the insurance company. Granted, there is a provision within DAB's bylaws that would indemnify a chapter or a department up to $100,000 in the event of a loss and in the event that they did not have a DNO policy in place to cover that. However, I've got to tell you, um, there are a lot of hoops to jump through. There are a lot of requirements that have to be met before the national organization will even consider reimbursing a chapter or a department for a loss up to that $100,000 amount. Um, there's got to be uh, criminal charges brought. There's got to be a civil lawsuit filed in the event of um, uh, criminal charges not being brought by the authorities. Every opportunity has to be taken by the department or the chapter to be um, to, to try to collect anything that was lost by way of uh, either a settlement or a judgment against the individual that uh, stole the funds. Uh, uh, so a DNO policy is very inexpensive and is a much easier method of protecting uh, the assets of the organization and getting those funds back in the event of something going wrong. It's also our obligation to ensure that our treasurers um, have a very strict accounting of expenses and, and disbursements of the organization. And when we talk about expenses and disbursements of the organization, we're talking about donations that are being made by the chapter or the department um, to uh, VA medical centers, to homeless and needy veteran programs in our communities. We need to know where our money's going as an organization. It's our fiduciary responsibility, whether we're the treasurer or an officer of the chapter, but just as a general member, when we go to a chapter meeting, we should fully understand what our chapter has spent uh, during the course of the, the month, where those funds went, who they went to. Um, so one of the things also that, uh, as I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, disbursements of funds from DAB entities really ought to be spent on uh, supporting DAB's chartered purpose and not making other uh, general donations to other nonprofit organizations. Uh, an example that I tip, now that doesn't mean that we cannot make a donation or a support a program financially that is being operated and conducted by another nonprofit organization. Uh, we just simply cannot make a, che a blank check, or not a blank check, but make a check payable to another organization to help support their general operating expenses. If a, another nonprofit organization is hosting a stand down for homeless veterans and they come to DAB, uh, the chapter of the department asking for financial assistance to help host that program, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the chapter or department providing funding to help support that because at the end of the day, that disbursement that we're making by the DAB chapter or the department, we can justify to our donors that it's being spent on our federally chartered purpose of providing services to ill and injured veterans and their families. Um, we have seen, unfortunately, instances where uh, many DAB chapters, maybe in one chapter, uh, are also dual members of another uh, veterans organization, um, Legion VFW or some other organization and perhaps that other organization is not doing so well financially. They've fallen upon hard times or 
you know, they had a uh, significant um, repair that they needed to make to their building. So, you know, they come up with this grand idea that we as American Legion members or VFW uh, members or any other organization members, we know DAB has a lot of money. And so we're also members of DAB, so we're going to go to the next DAB chapter meeting and we're going to propose a motion that we make a donation to um, our other organization to help pay for our roof or our flood damage or whatever the case might be. That's absolutely a conflict of interest. Uh, it's an inappropriate expenditure of DAB resources. And I could almost guarantee you that if the general public in your area found out that that were taking place, funding and support of DAB would go away. Because again, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, funds given to us by the general public is their fund, it's, it's their money. They've just given it to us to be good stewards of it and to support DAB's programs. If they wanted their donation to go to another organization, they would have certainly given their uh, donation to that organization. So it's very, very important that we're good stewards of our donor's money to ensure that it's being used to fulfill our chartered purpose. Just to touch brief, briefly on annual financial reporting, um, I, I know that uh, many of you uh, had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to uh, log in and participate in to, on a webinar that I conducted in terms of comp a properly completed annual financial report. Um, we also, at the end of that uh, webinar, uh, we recorded it and immediately placed it on our YouTube channel. So if you're a treasurer uh, of a chapter or a department or if you're a commander, any officer, uh, leader of the chapter, I strongly encourage you to uh, go to our YouTube page and uh, take a look at that. Uh, it's an hour-long presentation and there's a lot of information in there that will certainly help you uh, as a leader, as a treasurer of your chapter, uh, properly complete and fill out your annual financial report so that once you submit it, uh, you know that it's actually, uh, everything is in the right category, everything's in the right order, and you're not going to get a letter back from the national organization saying that it's uh, incorrect, unacceptable, and you've got to do it again. Um, so with the annual financial report, obviously, we need to make sure that we have a complete accounting of uh, all funding. Uh, we'll, we'll have time for a question and answers uh, at the end. I'm sorry. I apologize. And I see many of you taking photos of, this, uh, of the screen. Uh, at the end of my presentation, my email address will be up there. So if you would like copies of this uh, presentation and the slides, um, whenever my email po address pops up, just uh, jot it down, send me an email, and whenever I get back next week, I'd be more than happy to share a copy of the slides with you so you don't have to look through your uh, pictures. Um, We've, we've got to have a complete accounting of where all of our funding is coming from in terms of a chapter or as a department. We also have to have a complete accounting of all the expenditures and distributions that we make as a chapter or department because we need to know um, as a chapter, you know, how much are we spending on service programs? How much money are we spending on other expenses? How much money are we spending on conventions and seminars? Um, we, because, of course, that's one of the requirements of the annual financial report. That's one of the key items that um, you're asked to break down. So we need to understand and know where all of our funding is going. It'll make life so much easier at the end of the accounting period for the treasurer to complete that annual financial report. And, of course, proper uh, record keeping and documentation throughout the course of the year um, and staying on top of that throughout the course of the year makes it so much easier when June 30th rolls around that uh, treasurer and the other officers in the audit committee of the chapter or the department can start working on that annual financial report rather than um, coming to the realization that, oh, oh my gosh, it's June 30th, it's the end of the uh, financial reporting period, we have to have our annual financial report completed uh, by September 30th. Let's go back through all of our records, compile everything, see what we've done, uh, see where all of our money went. If we continue to maintain that throughout the course of the year, it should be a very simple process. When June 30 hits, 
you can simply start to complete that annual financial report. You have all your receipts, you have all your documents, all your supporting documentation, your bank statements ready to uh, initiate the completion of that annual financial report and have it in on time. And again, those are always due September 30th. And again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. I mean, um, as I mentioned earlier, at the national organization, every seven, for 87 cents of every dollar that comes in is spent on free programs of service to disabled veterans, ill and injured veterans and their families. So we really, really, really need to focus on uh, ensuring that our service expenditures uh, really should be supporting our DSO, CSO programs, the DAV Transportation Network program, VA Voluntary Services programs versus uh, contributions made to other organizations. If a chapter or a department is delinquent in filing its annual financial report, and as I mentioned, those are due September 30th of each year, uh, there obviously are consequences. Now, we're not sticklers on that, um, that deadline. If you contact us in the middle of September and saying, you know, hey, we're having some difficulty uh, compiling our financial report or getting records, um, can we have an extension? We absolutely will do that all day long, as long as we know you're working on it uh, and just not dragging your feet on it. Uh, we will certainly grant extensions. However, uh, it's very important to keep in mind that if your department or your chapter submits a grant request to the Columbia Trust to help support a program that you're operating, whether it be your HSC program, whether it's to support uh, and help uh, pay uh, for a van that you want to utilize uh, for your DAV transportation network, the Columbia Trust cannot consider a grant application until they know the financial position of the chapter or the department. And so if we don't have your annual financial report whenever uh, it's time uh, to order vans or th at the time that you uh, request a grant from the Columbia Trust to support your HSC program, uh, obviously those grants will be delayed because we have to have those annual financial reports to under have a current understanding of the financial picture of the chapter of the department. And obviously, as um, we all know, DAB chapters, DAB departments are all uh, a part of the parent organization, the national organization. All of our charters are issued by the National Executive Committee. All of our departments, all of our chapters fall under our IRS issued group exemption number. And because of that, it's the parent's responsibility, or in this case, the national organization's responsibility, to have an understanding of what chapters and departments are doing, which is the primary purpose for the completion of annual financial reports. Um, so uh, we, we, you know, a lot of people say, well, why do we have to provide these financial reports to the national organization? Why are you so interested in what we're doing? It, it's not for a couple of reasons. It's not so much that, you know, we're, you know, micromanaging you, uh, but A, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the Internal Revenue Service to ensure that what we're, what our chapters and departments are doing is in line with our federally chartered purpose, uh, but it's also to ensure that DAV's free programs of service to ill injured veterans in the community are being fulfilled. And that's the only way that we can identify that is by way of a review of the annual financial report. Um, one of the things that I talked about earlier about, um, you know, uh, purchasing a DNO policy uh, and having a method to collect funds from someone who might have uh, stolen, embezzled, or misappropriated monies of your chapter or department uh, kind of leads me to my final point that I want to talk about today, and that's our responsibility as DAV members to and leaders at the chapter level and at the department level to properly vet uh, those officers, those leaders in our chapters and departments that are uh, wishing to run for office. Um, give you a couple of good examples. Um, if we know that John Smith, there are no John Smiths in the room, are there? Okay, just because I use that very generically all the time. 
and I've offended a John Smith or two as well. Uh, John Smith decides that uh, he wants to run for treasurer of um, the DAV chapter, and uh, unbeknownst to the members of the chapter, John Smith just got out of prison two years ago for embezzlement, for larceny, bank robbery, whatever the case may be. Um, we certainly would not want the individual in charge of our finances and responsible for our finances, right? I know I wouldn't want him in charge of my checkbook. Um, we have also had um, instances where we have had um, commanders, whether they be chapter commanders, department commanders, who have a history associated with them that if it were known to the general public would not um, cast a very positive light on DAB. Um, now, we, within DAB National Headquarters, we kind of use the term crimes of moral turpitude. So when we are vetting our candidates for chapter offices, department offices, we certainly, uh, we discourage you from doing a background check on people because we're not going to get down into the weeds in terms of those very small things that may have happened to somebody, you know, 50 years ago when they were in the military and uh, maybe had a, uh, one or two beers too many and got in a bar fight and, you know, was arrested for disorderly conduct, something like that. But um, a very simple Google search of an individual's name if there's something that is absolutely uh, embarrassing, uh, severe, drastic, um, it, it's certainly going to be identified by a simple Google search. Crimes such as, obviously, uh, uh, rape, uh, child molestation, um, things of that nature. Those are the, those are the real things that uh, we really, as an organization, need to be aware of in terms of those individuals who are seeking an office within our chapter or department. We certainly cannot have someone like that out there representing themselves as a commander of a chapter and then all of a sudden someone finds out and realizes, oh, well, that's John Smith. John, John just got out of prison. He, uh, he's a sexual offender. As a matter of fact, he's uh, on the sexual offender registry. Unfortunately, we've had that uh, over the last many years, and of course, the Department Executive Committee didn't have any idea of it at the time, but uh, at the time that it was identified, they were already elected, so they had to take action to remove them uh, from those positions. So due diligence goes a long way uh, prior to elections at all levels to do a little bit of vetting uh, of those candidates to ensure that we don't find ourselves as an organization at any level um, with leaders that may have a past that uh, would not reflect uh, uh, very kindly on DAV. So my, uh, as promised, um, that's going to wrap up my portion. Of course, we're going to have time for Q&A uh, at the end, but I know that Brian has um, some information to share, and he's got a flight that he has to be on here shortly, so we need to end promptly at 4. So I want to make sure that he has time to present uh, his remarks and that we both have time for a little bit of Q&A. But my email address is there at the bottom. It's uh, E. Hartman, H-A-R-T-M-A-N, at DAV.org. Uh, if you would like a copy of these slides, whenever you get back, certainly just uh, shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to provide that to you uh, once I get back next week. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Brian while we make a little transition here. Uh, and following his remarks, then, of course, uh, we do have a microphone down here at the very front. So whenever he's finished, if you have questions for uh, he or I, uh, as long as time permits up until 4 o'clock, we'll be more than happy to uh, entertain those. Let me try to click over here and get out of this here. There you go. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It does seem loud up here. Can everyone hear me? Wow. It's like having yourself talk back to yourself. 
Um, good afternoon. I'm, I'm glad so many of you did decide to come out to our session and are sticking around um, so late in the afternoon. I know it's tough to keep everyone awake uh, this late in the afternoon after lunch, so I thought I might, being a fundraiser, I thought I might do a fundraiser, and if I saw someone yawn, I'd come by and collect a dollar, but I checked with Ed, and he said that wasn't in our bylaws, so he, went, he, he doesn't let me do things either, so you guys aren't the only ones he doesn't let, he doesn't let do things from time to time. Um, so uh, I'm going to try to go through my slides fairly quickly to leave time for questions. I know you guys often have a lot of questions more for Ed than me, which is fine. Um, but um, I'll try to go through these somewhat fast. Um, today I'm going to touch on our vehicle donation program, how that impacts you, our Just Be Kids program, Drive for Your Community, um, which is a Ford program and some new initiatives we're working on. But one of the things I didn't have in my uh, agenda to talk about that I wanted to start with, because uh, Ed had mentioned about how funds trickle down from national. Um, one of the things I know you, you, you probably heard uh, and saw today in the joint opening session is how many great corporate partners we have more and more who are giving to, to DAV. Um, those corporate partnerships that do those cause marketing campaigns where they're raising money from their, from their customers, I believe you all know that 25% of those funds do go back to, uh, uh, to the department. So as though that revenue continues to grow, that money does, does go back uh, to the departments. Um, I often get questions or calls, though, about, well, how can I work with a particular company in my backyard? Is it okay for me to go after a business? And the answer to that is, to, it's a little yes and no. Um, if it's a, a, a single entity owned operation, it's not a regional or a national chain of some sort, um, we have no problems with you reaching out to them if it's a, just a single local restaurant of, of some sort um, and getting your proper approvals. It's more when it's a regional or it's a national um, uh, owned entity where it's multiple stores um, that may be doing something to support you that we would like to at least have you all reach out to us just to make sure we may be already having a relationship with, with that particular business that you may not be aware of or in negotiations with a particular business that you may not be aware of. So um, we would just ask that you reach out to, to myself, Ed, someone in fundraising um, to check with us um, when it's, a, as I said, a regional or national. But if it's just a local pizza shop in your neighborhood and that's all they own, Go for it. Um, we're, we're perfectly, perfectly fine, fine with you all doing so. But um, this year, we're probably going to have about a half a million dollars almost um, from our corporate partnerships come back down to the departments and chapters, which we're really, really happy about. So, so, whoa. Talking about our vehicle donation program, this launched three years ago, um, our national car donation program. It's doing extremely well. Um, in those three years, we've had about 2,200 cars donated, uh, an average amount of about $400, and we've raised already this year a million dollars. We will be close to probably $1.7 million this year raised. 25% of those funds do go back to, uh, to the departments as well. So some departments, um, as you see, here's our list of our top 20 states, uh, California, Minnesota, um, probably over $50,000 are going back to the departments from those chapters, uh, f I mean from those uh, donations. Uh, Virginia, Maryland, Texas, New York, it's probably going to be close to $25,000 that are going back uh, from, from this particular program. You can see here some of the typical cars that are donated, if you're curious. Ford is at the top. Um, Toyota, Honda, Chevys. Uh, what's interesting is it's not a surprise that Mercedes and, and maybe Lexus are at the high end of the dollar amount, but Jeep is right up there as well, which I'm not quite sure why Jeeps are valued so high, but um, they're up there as well. Um, a lot of times people think the cars that are donated are ones that don't run, you know, they're sort of the junk pile cars, but that's not necessarily true. Almost half of the cars that are donated to us is because somebody wants to, doesn't want to trade it in and instead wants to give it to us um, instead of trading it in. So right around probably 49% of that fits in that category, although a lot still do fall into the category of I don't want to fix it or it's not running um, as well. We, we have a toolkit online. Uh, if you'd like to 
join us in marketing the program. We do market the program, uh, but we encourage you to do so as well. It's an easy way for people in the community to support DAV, and the more cars that are donated, the more that comes back to your departments. We have a toolkit online with flyers and, and email templates and graphics and promotional items that you can use uh, to promote the program. So uh, we encourage you to join us in, in doing so, and um, certainly uh, it'll pay dividends in terms of revenue trickles back back down to the departments. Uh, Just Be Kids, I think you guys are all familiar with Just Be Kids. It's a program that we created about four years ago um, to help provide scholarships to the children uh, at Camp Corral. Uh, when we started this, you guys, were, you guys were actually doing this long before National got involved um, in raising funds. Uh, the challenge was that we had no way to account for those funds being raised, and in order to fall within our bylaws, um, which says all funds must go back to DEV in supporting its mission. We created this scholarship so that the funds could come to DEV and then we dispersed them back out to Camp Corral. So when we started this, National was matching about $100,000 a year in the funds that you raised. That has now increased to $300,000 that National is matching for the fun, for the, from the funds that you raised. So the first $300,000 raised is matched by National Headquarters. In order for us to do that, though, in order to, to track those funds, match those funds, give you recognition, um, you must use this form, which you can find online as part of the Just Be Kids toolkit in your membership portal. This form is, is online and you can fill it out and put your chapter information or department information, when you raise funds, how much you raised. If you raise funds with a Golden Corral store, which many of you do, you can put the store information on here for, for how much you raise with that particular store. And then we can track that information to make sure that those stores get the proper credit. I know uh, Golden Corral stores have competition, so they're very competitive and they want to know how much you are helping to raise for them. And so we give this information back to Golden Crow on a monthly basis. But we're only able to do so if you use this form. So if you are fundraising for Just Be Kids, you must send the money into national headquarters. Do not give it to the Golden Crow stores. Um, so that we can track, track those funds. Uh, as I've mentioned about the toolkit, there is a bucket that you can order to collect the funds. We have Just Be Kids brochures and materials, so as you're uh, doing fundraisers, you can hand out information about the, the DAV Just Be Kids scholarship, um, and it's branded. Uh, so you can go out there and order these materials um, that are out there now. And I know, I think this year, literally, we had about 100 different chapters order buckets. Um, so if you're not aware of those, uh, please take advantage of that, and, and you can use those. Um, as you heard, uh, I think, the other day, uh, this year, does anybody know how much we donated to Camp Corral? Do have any idea? We donated $840,000 this year to Camp Corral from, from your efforts. So that's phenomenal, and you guys should feel very, very proud of that. I know Camp Corral is really appreciative of it, and here's all the chapters and departments that and individuals that played a role in that. Um, if you don't see your chapter name up there, let me know. Um, but it may, it may be because we didn't receive your form. Um, we, we will send this out, so uh, don't feel like you have to take a picture. But it, once you get this, if you don't see your chapter up there, uh, please let me know because it means that we did not have a record of your funds being received by national headquarters. Uh, the other. Uh, program I want to mention is the Ford Drive for Your Community program. We've been doing with them this for several years. I believe many of you are aware this is a great, easy way to raise money uh, for your chapters or departments. Um, but through this program, all you have to do is go to a local Ford dealer and say, I want I would like for you to be a drive for your community a fundraiser for me, um, and they most likely know what that, they should know what that means, um, and pick a date and they'll say, yes, I'll do that, and what, on that particular day, anyone who test drives a car, um, the chapter department will receive $20 um, for that test drive. So you literally could ask friends and families on that particular day to all come out and test drive. They don't have to buy a car. 
car. All I have to do is test drive a car, and they'll raise $20, up to $6,000 on any particular day. This is a really, really easy way to raise um, a significant amount of, amount of money. And still, we're not finding too many departments or chapters that are taking advantage of this. Um, but there's also a toolkit for this online, which provides, uh, walks you through the process. Um, once you do sign up, we have banners, we have flyers that you can use. Um, again, email templates, digital banners to promote to promote the program. And again, all you have to do is get, get Ford, your Ford dealer to buy in. They'll go online and fill out the proper application. And then there's an application online for you to fill out uh, as part of the toolkit that you'll send back into DAV. Uh, to date, we've only had 11 departments participate in this program. Um, on average, they're raising almost $4,000, but um, we would like to see so many more DV departments and chapters use this program. It does book up fast for the next year, like a lot of different, they open this up to a, a whole lot of different organizations and it books up fast for the next year. So almost now, if you wanted to do this, you would have to sign up with a Ford dealer now for next year. So um, if you're interested, please, please uh, reach out to us if you have more questions or just go straight to a Ford dealer um, and uh, have them participate in this, in this program. This is what the membership portal page looks like that has the toolkits for Drive for Your Community, the Vehicle Donation Toolkit, and Just Be Kids. All I have to do is go into the membership portal online and, and download those, uh, those various toolkits. Last but not least, we have a couple of new initiatives that we're working on I want to give you a heads up on. I know we're all getting ready and excited about DV Centennial, so we're going to have a Donate Your Bo Birthday program um, in honor of DV's birthday, where people next year can, instead of uh, asking friends and family members for gifts, they can have them donate to DAV. Uh, they can just go online and send out an email uh, to their friends and family members, or it's a way to share it on Facebook and ask them to donate to DAV in, in honor of its birthday, in, in honor of your birthday and DAV's birthday. Um, we hope to have this launched in the next couple of months. You can see the website here, www.dv.org slash birthday. Um, many of you probably picked up uh, some information from our booth, but you'll hear more about this. But uh, just keep in mind, uh, as you have your birthday next year, that you can uh, use your birthday as a way to help raise funds for DAV for its centennial celebration. And uh, last but not least, given the success of our vehicle donation program, we're looking to start a clothing recycling program. Um, you can see the statistics here that people throw away about 68 pounds of clothes a year, which 85% goes in the trash. Um, and so we're going to start a program which will allow people, it's called curbside pickup, where people can uh, literally put their clothes out in front of their door and we will pick it up um, and, and recycle it. I know there's some departments, chapters that already have recycle, clothing recycling programs. We certainly do not plan to impede on those existing programs in any shape, fashion, or, or in form. Um, but uh, in the areas where this is appropriate across the country, we will be launching this, um, which we're excited about, and marketing this. And again, 25% uh, of the proceeds from this will also go back to the department. Um, so you will be hearing more about this in the coming months. We plan to launch this hopefully before the end of the year uh, in our Cincinnati area and, and begin expanding it. But given the success of our, of our uh, vehicle donation program, we think this is going to be successful. Also, for those of you who currently have clothing recycling programs, uh, the partner that we're working with um, is really, really good about um, coming up with new ways to help maximize uh, maybe the returns you have from those clothes that you collect. So if you'd like maybe some other ideas and, and how you might be able to leverage those clothes that you're picking up further, reach out to me and uh, maybe we can chat about how they can help you with those endeavors as well. And that's, that's my presentation. So I think we have time for, for some questions. And thank you guys for all that you do. I can tell you the reason we're growing and our corporate partnerships are growing, we hear this time and time again, is because all of the good things that you guys are doing in the community. And that's why they want to partner with DEV. So thank you for all that you're doing as well. And now we will open it up for questions. If you have a question, can you please just walk up to the microphone and use the microphone up here so everybody can hear you? Thank you. Did, 
Deb Olson, Department. Is, for, is it on? Can you hear me? Speak on. Okay. Okay. Um, Deb Olson, Department of Massachusetts, two questions. Number one is if you get um, like um, Home, uh, Home Depot and Lowe's, if you need to replace a ramp on your building, they will come out and help build that. That's a donation of like kind money. They don't give you cash. Mm -hmm. Can you still do that? Yeah. They, they, they don't give you cash. They come out and they help build the thing. Right. Yes, absolutely. And of course, it, it, much like Walmart, uh, Home Depot and Lowe's, their corporate headquarters provides a certain amount of funding to each of its stores to do such operations. Um, so you're right. It's a value to uh, your chapter. Uh, that in-kind donation should be reflected under uh, other income. Uh, and so it might be $5,000 worth of supplies to help build a ramp for the chapter. Okay. And my second question is, with the change in the bylaw, which I'm going to assume is going to take place um, this weekend before we leave, we go from 10 to 25,000 uh, reporting to national. Is that going to take place this fiscal year or will it be next fiscal year? No, it will be next fiscal year. Now, I'm glad that you mentioned that, Deb, because that uh, um, the part or chapters are still going to be, all chapters are still going to be re required to provide a financial report to their department. That being said, it's the responsibility of the department to evaluate and review those annual financial reports very, very thoroughly. Um, those that will continue to come to national, we will review those as well. well. The reason I was asking that is to make sure that we had more than one department inspector to review, well, well and their deputies to review them and make sure that they're geared up and they okay. know what they need to review. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, some questions for Ed. Um, Jim Yale, uh, Chapter 20, Department of Utah. Going back to uh, a little confused on uh, the discussion we had about um, participation with other nonprofit organizations. Um, in the recent past, we our chapters have been involved or been invited to participate with other service, veteran service organizations uh, to help host a picnic, if you will, uh, to provide funds for the food and tableware and so on and so forth. And also we have been invited to set up our own table, of course, for promotion of uh, the DAB membership. Right. Sharing information to the veterans in the community, what benefits are available, and so on, as chapter service officers would be there available. That's the first question. Okay, well, let me answer that before you move on to the next one. So, as I mentioned, there's there's nothing wrong with making a donation to another uh, nonprofit organization so long as we can justify that that donation is being used to further. Uh, support our federally chartered program of providing free s programs or services to ill and injured veterans. That would, to me, would be appropriate. If your chapter feels that it could be justified to the public, that's absolutely fine. The one thing that we can't do, as I mentioned, is just make general, broad donations to another uh, uh, nonprofit organization just for them to operate their programs. Yeah, I understood. And, okay. and the money would be strictly used for the purchase of sure. food to feed the veterans and their yeah. families. Certainly fine. That would come to the event Okay. because there are several organizations there that right. uh, offer their services in, to the veterans in the community as well. I understand. So that's uh, the first question. The second one, in that same event, we would set up our own table, for example. Uh, we often uh, will have our own T-shirts, hats, and so on and so forth that we use for funding for charity drive, which we've already had approved from the department to, to do that. And then money, of course, goes back to the veterans in the community. And under that same umbrella hospice, to get, uh, we don't want to give the, the public the idea that we're in strictly supporting this other organizations by doing so. 
So what's your take on that? Well, I mean, as long as you have your own separate table and that table is solely DAV, I don't think that there's any, there should be any confusion by the general public that you're there supporting everybody else because it's very evident and very clear that you're there representing DAV. So I think you're fine with that as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Good questions. Um, Stangano, Chapter 2, Department of Washington. Two questions. One, funds in an FDIC account. My understanding is Charles Schwab, Edward Jones, things like that. My understanding, they were not FDIC accounts. Well, those, those are investments. So we're talking about the liquid ready assets that are available to the chapter, such okay. as a checking account, savings account. So long-term account. investments were right. okay. Right. So long-term investments are, are certainly fine, obviously, because they're not going to insure a loss, right? Correct. <laughs> the other question um, dealt with vetting of new officers or potential officers. Are we going to get into any kind of trouble on a personal basis with rumors getting out and things like that? Example, I know there have been officers in the past or members in the past who have ran for office who have had convictions for things that you really wouldn't want them to be officers for. Right. How do you kind of stop that from happening? Because they, they may be nominated off the floor, and then what do you do? Well, it's a matter of making the, uh, if someone is nominated off the floor, it's a matter of us making the membership aware of that issue. Now, there's no, there should not be any fear of retaliation or lawsuits, because again, criminal records are public records, right? Correct. So if you can, if it's a part, if it's a matter of public record, there should be no fear of retaliation or a lawsuit that you know, hey, uh, Stan uh, exposed the fact that I'm a child molester and I can't become the chaplain now. I thought you were going to call me a child. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thank you. You want to Stan? Hi, Hillary Means, treasurer at Chapter 12 of Montgomery, Alabama. On the annual financial report. Every year I've gotten an envelope with the report with the different color sheets. But this year I received a computerized from email where I can actually use the email, uh, printout. Is that okay to use that report? Absolutely, yes. So if you received that from the national organization, cert that's certainly fine. Uh, you don't have to wait to receive that mailing each year with the paper or annual financial report in it. You can certainly um, uh, complete and submit your fi uh, annual financial report online electronically. Okay, Not a thank problem. you. You're welcome. Dominic Filipponi, uh, Chapter 11, uh, Florida, Department of Florida. You may have just answered this, but basically you mentioned a lot of different forms going on. I was wondering if those are, can we do those, uh, download them electrically, but also send them back uh, electrically? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and as a matter of fact, they're, uh, they're fillable online. So once you access them online, you can uh, fill them uh, and then submit them to the uh, membership department for the uh, review of those annual financial reports. And with the funds, if we have a check, can we send that check electronically uh, to deposit directly or anything like that or no? Um, well, let me ask you, why would you be sending, are you talking about funds for like Just Be Kids? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. How would you do that? There's a. Yes. On the form at the bottom, there's an address and an accounting. It goes to our accounting department. So, yes, you can just stick it in an envelope to that address. I wouldn't do cash. You can sit in check, though. Yeah. No, instead of a check, like, you know, we could. An electronic uh, electronic transfer. Electronic transfer. the funds. Like, we'll get the checks yeah. from the bank when we cash we can the cash. And you we can, can take it. that. Just reach out to me and I can walk you through. We can certainly do that. Thank you, yeah. sir. Walter Bell, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Chapter 3. I went to a Ford dealership and, okay, I went to a Ford dealership in Nashville and they said they didn't, they had no idea <laughs> what I was talking about. Is there a form that I need to take? How do I follow up on it? Whenever you, we, we do hear that from time to time, and every Ford dealer is able to participate. If you ever run into that, 
please let me know and I'll get you in con I'll forward it on to the appropriate Ford contact to make sure that they reach out to their dealership and inform them that they are misinformed. <laughs> it, so just let me just let me know. Because every Ford dealer is able to participate in the program. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ernest Davis. I'm the commander of Chapter 7 in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, fairly new as far as being the commander, again. Uh, do we, can we use check cards from our Navy Federal instead of using these painful checks and try to get things going? I'm from the new age. I guess, you know, kind of young here. I hope I am. But I'm trying to get with the times and make things happen. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's a question. That's a good question. And that's a question that comes up each and every year at this seminar. And our answer is this. We highly discourage the use of debit cards and credit cards mm -hmm. at the chapter level for many number of reasons. Um, as we all know that typically within our chapter's constitution and bylaws, any disbursement of funds requires two signatures. Mm -hmm. And so by virtue of having a debit card or a credit card, you're essentially foregoing that and allowing one person the sole authority to make a disbursement or expense on behalf of the organization. Now, nothing in our bylaws say that a chapter, a department, cannot have credit cards. Nowhere is that said. But we do certainly strongly discourage it because in those instances where we have identified theft, it has typically been by way of a commander or a treasurer that has had a debit card uh, or a credit card in the name of the chapter that has absolutely drained them dry without any knowledge of the membership. Um, so if a chapter or a department does wish to um, employ or implement a debit or credit card progress or program, um, there have to be very proper checks and balances on a monthly basis. That means that if an expense is incurred and paid for by a debit card or credit card, a receipt needs to accompany that uh, to validate the expenditure with the treasurer and with the body each and every month. Um, but um, it's the discretion of the body, but it's highly discouraged. Okay, and one other question too is that um, I'm I'm in very involved in marketing as well, and um, when I'm out there uh, talking to different companies or have you, and I think we sh I know you have a partnership. I see that, but for instance, just my little chapter, you know, I have a company that actually you know give pays for the donuts, the coffee, and stuff like that, and in ex in exchange, I like to maybe give a flyer out or give our service officers the squeeze balls or stress balls or pencils or whatever else. Is that appropriate? Can we do that? You know, if they're actually paying for the breakfast and when I have my service officers and you know, me fill out the claim to actually give them a back scratcher. Sure, and absolutely. Logo on. Yeah. Recognition okay. is always good. Of course, people will continue to support DAB <laughs> with, with some recognition. So absolutely positively. That's all I need to make sure. Thank all you right. very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, Mike File from uh, Victoria, Texas, Chapter 169. I'm the Senior Vice Commander. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, you were saying about the uh, use of the logo. Is just the letters DAV, is that registered, or is it the colors black, 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 and green registered? The uh, acronym DAV, the name Disabled American Veterans, the SEAL, which is the Lady Columbia, the Oval mm -hmm. SEAL, and the block DAV, the uh, green and gray that we typically see, those are trademarked. So if, uh, if I go to a, a company and they say, we're going to put a flyer out for you, and they put DAV in red, white, and blue, that's, that's not allowed? That's not allowed. That's correct. Okay. Now, I mean, it's allowed as long as you get the approval from us that, you know, says, hey, we've got this company who wants to do a fundraiser for us, or we're working with them to do a fundraiser, and this is the flyer that they propose to use. Okay. Um, it, it, as long as you get NEC approval, that's certainly fine. Now, we would not approve a red, white, and blue DAV logo. Uh, now, a way to get around that um, is for, without the particular specific use of DAV's name, logo, and even our trademarks, if a company wanted to do that with the intent the proceeds go into your chapter, they can simply say proceeds of this event are going to benefit disabled veterans in our area. Okay. 
That's pretty much what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. 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 Question number two. Uh, USAA uh, is a big uh, sponsor for uh, 5Ks every year. And now uh, they knocked it down to one 5K in Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. I really don't like that because I've always enjoyed walking them. We in Victoria, as our chapter, we want to do a fundraiser for do a 5K there, and it's not going to be real big, but it's just there in Victoria County in Victoria. I talked to the USA reps there yesterday, and they said, yes, contact us, and maybe we can help you get some finances. The closest USAA uh, subsidy there is in San Antonio, which is like two hours away. Would I be able to do that or not? Hmm. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably not. Um, they are the presenting sponsor of our national program. They also sponsor the Winter Sports Clinic and some other things. So I would, without knowing more of the details, I would say no. If there's some sort of USAA local entity, which I don't think there is, but if there's some local entity of USAA that wanted to support you, yes, but anything affiliated with the national um, organization. Well, that's what I'm saying. I couldn't contact the one in the, like the lady I got before, she's here in Florida. She would contact the one in San Antonio, and then San Antonio would decide yes or no. We San Antonio is their national headquarters. Oh, <laughs> didn't know that. Okay. So when they say they're contacting San Antonio, they're contacting their national headquarters. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Russell, Br Russell Br from Chapter 126, made here in Texas. Uh, in regards to uh, uh, media uh, solicitations, uh, the Forget Me Not, Camp Corral, and Veterans Appreciation event that we support every year, uh, I, I advertise on social media. Am I out of bounds there? There, with, with the use of social media and, and fundraising announcements, if you will, like on Facebook or Twitter, uh, if the chapter is hosting or is going to have a forget me not drive it in front of the Walmart, there's nothing wrong with making a posting on your Facebook page or Twitter account or other yeah. social media account saying, hey, DAV chapter 136 is going to be in front of Walmart on Saturday collecting funds for uh, forget me not drive, come out and see us and help support DAV. That's certainly fine. The thing that you, so you can announce the event and tell people where to go to support it, but you can't have a method for them to donate, donate online. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very good question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne Ramey, Chapter 20, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, the question about Just Be Kids. In the case, I know you made the statement that don't let Golden Corral send the money. In the cases there when the event, when we're supporting Just Be Kids, in the Old Corral event, I'm sorry, the Camp Corral event, I'm sorry, Camp Corral event, they collect, they take all the monies in. That's true. They, so really, they actually have all the monies right. in their possession. We don't have them, so they have to be willing to That's give different. it back to us. No. Any monies that we collect in their stores, I say we, DAV, through our, next, the bucket, just okay. be kids comes back to DV. If they're collecting it at the register, they send it into. No, I mean the case where we have the buckets there, but all the monies are left at Golden at Golden Corral when we leave for the day. You collect the money and then you. And then they you, put the money in the buckets. They put the money in the buckets. The buckets are sealed. And, and then you're giving it. And then you're giving it to them at the end of the day. Right. They maintain the money at the end of the day. They're, they're collecting under Camp Corral. So no. Going in and collecting under no, he's saying their members are going in under DAV and using our buckets, and then they give the money to Golden Crow at night. Please don't do that. <laughs> you should, you should at night, you take any money raised with you. Do not give it to Golden Corral. Okay. You keep it, and then at the end of the campaign, send us one check for the total amount that you raised from your bank account. Do not give that money to Golden Corral. I don't know if you want to reiterate okay. that. And just to um, mention that, or to uh, expand on that a little bit, obviously, as Brian mentioned in his presentation, Golden Corral has its own nonprofit right. organization, Camp Corral. Right. And so their stores, uh, 
uh, participate in raising money for that nonprofit organization. Right. Now, there are many chapters, and, and because of the relationships that the Golden Corrals have with DAB, they say, hey, come in and help us with, uh, raise money right. for our Camp Corral campaign. Right. Right. And we do that, but we shouldn't be doing that under the banner of DAB. So we shouldn't be wearing DAB apparel in there. We shouldn't be bringing in DAB canisters for that. That's why Brian mentioned we created Just Be, Kid, be Kids because okay. we can go in, raise the money under our program, and then we send it off to Golden Corral. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Norm Crawford, Kokomo, Indiana, Chapter 28, Treasurer. Uh, I, this is fundraising question uh, for is, is there any outlets for fundraising for a building or to purchase land for a chapter? No. Um, <laughs> the, the, here's the thing is obviously I mean we have a requirement and we have an obligation to spend our money on service programs so we cannot self restrict any funds coming into our organization for per, uh, per se a, a veterans uh, or a building. We have to spend our monies as we bring them in for our service program. So we can't self-restrict uh, creative funds solely for a building. Um, we all know that our constitutional bylaws only allow any DAB entity to include the national organization to only accumulate no more than three times their prior year's annual operating expenses. So if you had operating expenses, all of your expenses last year at your chapter totaled $5,000, just for simple math, you guys can only have $15,000 in the bank at any given time. Whereas if you had this separate account over here for a home that had $60,000 in it and you're trying to build it up and build it up, that would put you in violation of that and you'd get a letter from the national organization saying you're in violation of the bylaws, you got to spend money. Um, but no, we cannot uh, self-restrict funds specifically and solely for a home. Now, if somebody came to the chapter and said, uh, I want to give you this uh, building uh, for you guys to operate, that's certainly fine. Take that all day long. All right. All right. Uh, but you can't slowly accumulate self-restrict funds and continue to build money solely for the there, purchase of the no building. There's no separate funding right. for, for buildings or, or purchase land for chapter. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Jeremy Barada, Chapter Number 2, Clifton, Department of New Jersey. Question for you earlier, you were speaking about territory yes. and fundraising in territories. So the question I have for you is, if a chapter receives, let's say a chapter receives a check from a local business that is not specifically maybe in their territories in a neighboring town that might fall in another territory, uh, something like that, what does a chapter do with that check? Are they allowed to keep that check? Do they have to send keep it back? It. No, you keep it. Um, that's okay. you know that's the discretion of the business owner. Uh, that's their obligation to determine who they want the money to go to. Now it'd be different if the chapter went out to that other uh, that entity in another chapter's territory and requested the money, but they didn't. It was a gift. It was a grant. Um, different the difference between fundraising, where you're making an appeal, making a request for the funds, versus just receiving the gift that, out of the blue. So, That's so, certainly fine. So if you're in town X and a business from town Y just sends a check at the end of the year, they're doing their whatever, yep. you can keep that check, even Absolutely. if it's not in your territory. Correct. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. Dave Rust, Treasurer, Chapter 40, New Bern, North Carolina. My question is, you were talking about the credit card and debit cards. You say you highly recommend not having them. Is the department allowed to tell you, no, you cannot have them? It depends. If it's outlined in the department's bylaws, then they certainly have the authority because, of course, we have to remember we all have a parent, right? So chapters have the parent organization of the department. The department is the subordinate unit of the national organization, and everybody's underneath. Um, if there's a provision in the department's constitution or bylaws that says no chapters will have credit or debit cards, then they can enforce that. And remember, those constitution and bylaws are approved and adopted by the delegates as a whole throughout the state of North Carolina. So that's the governing document for every chapter in the state of North Carolina. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. 
David Lowe, Senior Vice Commander, Chapter 1, Portland, Oregon. I got a couple of questions for you. First of all, did I understand you to say that you're limited, that we are limited to uh, forgive me not drive of seven days per year? That is correct. And that, that's outlined in our national bylaws. And okay. um, previous, as I mentioned, it used to be seven, seven consecutive days. So you could only have one forgive me not drive a year so long as it didn't exceed seven consecutive days. Um, but it's been since amended that would allow you to break it up uh, over the course of the year to cover certain patriotic events and uh, holidays that would allow you to uh, maximize your exposure and your fundraising activities. Second, um, are we allowed to have more than one drive for your community event? We have two large Ford dealerships in our area. Are we permitted to have uh, events at both dealerships? Yes, if they both agree to do so, absolutely. Yep. Thank you very Go much. Go for it. Yes, Willie Thomas, Senior, Senior Vice, uh, Chapter 33, Auditor Maryland. I have two questions. Uh, first one, uh, we was having our Forget Me Not Drive just a few weeks ago, and uh, there was a guy there, a veteran that owns a business, and I don't, it's not in our area, but he wanted us to, to come out and, you know, I guess set up some uh, tables representing veterans, I guess, because a lot of veterans, I guess, buy his motorcycles and stuff. And if it's not in our area, can, what are we authorized to do at that place? Well, let me ask you, is there another chapter that is in that chartered I believe chart so. city? Mm -hmm. um, it would be obviously, and as, again, I always use the term sandbox. We all have to operate in our own little sandbox. So the appropriate thing to do would be to contact that, uh, you know, first and foremost, say thank you very much for the invitation. We do have a chapter that is in uh, Baltimore, just as an example. Um, uh, I'll pass that information along to them and see if they'd be willing to come out and support that. Okay, even if he invited us, we can't. Yes, exactly okay. right. Because <laughs> you're going to increase mill will with that other chapter, I promise you. <laughs> okay. They turn and the down. other question is also at the military base, you know, Fort Meade, there's a lot of people, you know, military. You know, they don't, I have no cash, I have no, you know, check or nothing. Is there any way we can take credit cards? Because a lot of military now, they, they don't take cash. You know, even when they go buy a soda for 50 cents, they debit card it. And well, of course, that would require the chapter to develop some kind of banking uh, mechanism that would allow for it to accept um, credit cards. Now, um, it can't be for the purpose of doing it online. So uh, if you're familiar with the square, the square yeah, um, you know, that's certainly fine. Uh, as long as it's a hand-to-hand -hand transaction mm -hmm. and not something that's done over the telephone or uh, online, that's fine. So we could probably use that square with buy with the chapter's money, and then it gets become the property of the chapter. Yep, it goes right in the chapter's account. Okay, I'm, but we can buy it with funds from the chapter, though. Which is what I'm saying. And oh yes, 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 I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and again, as long as the chapter approves it, because all expenditures of the chapter must meet with the approval of the chapter. Because I'm. I myself must have missed a couple hundred people saying that, you know, so if I throw them offline, hey, no problem. Yeah. Because, you know, you get them easily, too. That's how you get the membership easily because they can do the credit card. They love right. that. Right, yeah. They're the option, so that's yep. a good Absolutely. thing. Absolutely, yep. All right, so we can do the square because my commander wasn't sure that we could do it. Yep. Absolutely. All right, then. Okay. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Thomas Wells, South Carolina. My question is, um, my district, when you're trying to raise funds for your district, because it seems like we have our hands tied because I have three states, what is their suggestion and what will keep us out of jail and out of trouble? Well, um, first of all, that's a good question. And I know that we've addressed this before and, and particularly um, your district. Um, districts are not chartered entities of DAV. 
The only chartered entities of DAD are chapters, departments, and the national organization. So therefore, the only entity that is permitted uh, to conduct any fundraising activity are those chartered entities. A district is not a chartered entity, so therefore it cannot conduct any fundraising activities. It cannot maintain a bank account in the name of the district because there's no EIN number associated with it because there's no charter. Um, but understanding what you're saying, um, so you as the NEC for your district um, from South Carolina, if you're raising money for a campaign or to help offset the cost of a district meeting, there's nothing wrong with um, whichever department is going to be hosting the district meeting to ask the other departments in that district for funds to help support and offset the costs associated with the di district meetings. And then those funds will just go through their bank account at that particular department. <laughs> <laughs> But we're supposed to have a like a district um, convention. Well, and you know what? That that's a that's a um, misnomer because the bylaws say that you can host a district me meeting through the course of the year. It doesn't say you have to. You can, um, but if you want to, then obviously the logistics and the uh, scheduling. The contracting with the hotel is all got to be done by you. Okay. So what if a company wanted to sponsor, uh, like I say, the ninth district, and they want to donate money to the ninth district? Then it's got for the purpose of the ninth district meeting. Yes. Then it's got to be requested by the department that's hosting the conference, so like Myrtle Beach, right? Your district meetings are typically in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. So the Department of South Carolina would have to make that request, have the money go to them, and then also uh, pay out uh, the funds for the purpose of the district meeting. Okay. Thank you for keeping me out of jail. Yes, All right. <laughs> Wilson, last question. Uh, is, is your question for me or him? Him. Okay, real quick. Yes. He's got to run to the airport. <laughs> um, I'm Ray Butter. I'm um, from Washington, uh, North Carolina. The same advice. We have um, three counties around us that doesn't have a DAB chapter in it, and we work out all three counties. We do claims for all three counties. Is there, you know, like if we do a fundraiser, can we do a fundraiser in those counties too? You got it. Ask me. That, that's actually one for me. So if there are no um, uh, chapters in those other counties, uh, obviously you need to get the approval of the department to go into those counties and do those fundraisers. Uh, because again, at the end of the day, you're authorized by way of your charter to operate solely within the um, uh, chartered area of your, or the, the area of your charter. If there's no other DAV representation there, uh, the department would have to make the determination whether or not they want your chapter or if there's another chapter that might be more local to that area, the opportunity to do that. So uh, the answer to your question is if the department executive committee approves it, you absolutely certainly can. Okay, thank you. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, after 4 o'clock. He's got to run to the airport. I've got to run to another meeting. So I appreciate your participation. And thank you again very much.